26 is the third page here in algebra one. 26, it's right two and a quarter percent as a decimal. How many people have dealt with percentages and decimals before? I imagine some of you have seen it before. This is a topic we will go over, so it's okay if you don't quite have a handle on this now, but you should have a pretty good idea. The, I the idea generally is one in decimal form correlates to what percentage? No. 100%. So what does one half correlate to? 50%. What does one quarter correlate to? 25%. So they're asking, not that's 25%. So they're asking, what is two and a quarter percent? The way you can think about this is a half written in decimal, what is that actually? 0 0.50. This is 0. 25. So you have to figure out, well, look at this, 0 0.25 is 25%. What happened to the decimal place? How many? Twice. It moved over twice. It moved over two, exactly. So you have to figure out a quarter is really what per, it's 2, 5, right? So you know you have 2, 2, 5 here. You just have to know where to put the decimal place, right? So when, when, when we went from decimal to percent, which direction did you move the decimal? Did you move it 2 to the left or 2 to the right? right. Or 2 to the right, because it's 25% it turned into, right? Oh, yeah. So look, we want to go to 2 point. So you want to move this 2 to the right, and it'd be 2.25. So where do you have to put the decimal place? Here, because you have to move it how many spots? Yeah. 1, 2. 2.25 is 2 and a quarter. It's okay if you don't quite understand this now, but the idea is to go from decimal to percent, you move the decimal place two to the right. This Wait, is a little tricky. 0. 0.0225. So the answer is which one? Which answer for 26? A. a. The answer is A for 26. Correct. That's a really nice hit. Uh, thank actually. you. On 22, it's asking you to reduce a fraction in lowest terms. So it goes sales. 210 over returns. How do you reduce a fraction? Divide by, um, Divide by what? A common what? Denominator. Well, a com there's no multiple fractions here, so you can't find a, com a common factor. So both of those numbers, what's the easiest one to pull out? Yeah. Exactly. What's half of 210? 105. And what's, what's half of 154? What's half of 150? 75. What's half of 4? Two. What's 2 plus 75? 77. <laughs> 77. Try again. <laughs> Try again. 77. So now you're still looking for a common factor. You're looking for a common factor. How do you go about trying to find a common factor on this? Any ideas? Are they even? No. They're not even. So can you pull out 2s? No, you can't pull out twos. So you need to look at the factors. What are the factors of 77? Yeah. And? Yeah. 11. 11. <laughs> What's one factor you can definitely pull out of 105? Five. five. And what else? If you pull out a five, what's left? What's five into 105? 21. Five times 21 is 105. Oh, I didn't know what you were asking. Ah, do you understand now? Yeah. Okay. What are the factors of 21? Ah, so what are the what are the what are the nice factors there? Five, three, and seven, seven and eleven. So what's the common factor? Seven. So if we pull out a seven, what's seven? How many times is seven going to one hundred and five? Twenty-one. No. If I take out the seven, what's left? Five times three. What's oh, five times three? Fifteen. Fifteen. So we take out that, it ends up being fifteen over eleven. That's how you reduce it. You need to find common factors. Common factors, common factors. So it's not totally unfamiliar. You are subtracting fractions here. There's many different things we're going to look at how to attack this. I'm going to show you what my favorite method is. Does that sound good? You like? You want to learn my favorite method? I don't like fractions, so I'm going to get rid of them. I'm going to multiply everything by the same thing. Can someone tell me what I should multiply everything by? Yeah. What should I multiply? Well, hold on. I, we're not going to do it another way yet. I just want to show you that there are, there are tons of different ways. They're totally fine. Okay, Tori? What I'm saying is I want to show you the cleanest way that I like, and maybe you'll like it. Okay, well, I'm going to multiply by 7. So if I multiply by 7, what does this become if I, excuse me, what does this become if I multiply that by 7? It just becomes x minus 7x over 8 equals what? 
I'm multiplying everything by 7. You're going to see in a second. What's 7 times 2? 14. 14, thank you. I'm now going to multiply everything by what number? 8. What's 8 times x? What happens to 7x over 8 if I multiply it by 8? What's 8 times 14? I'll help you. What's 8 times 10? What's 8 times 4? 32. What's 32 plus 80? Ah, oh, you just did multiplication. Good. What's 8x minus 7x? Done. How was that? Do you like that method? Yeah. Now, here's the thing. Math is tricky because if you know that if you, it's easy if you know the method, right? But that's kind of, that's not, that doesn't really help you because if you don't know the method, it's not easy. So you get stuck in that circle. There are many different methods. For example, we are subtracting fractions. So what are you programmed to try to find if you're subtracting fractions? For example, kids, what happens if I asked you this? 1 7th plus 1 8th. How would you do that? What do you need to find? So you might have, how many of you tried to find a common denominator here? Maybe you tried to find a common denominator. There are other methods. I like this because it's pretty quick and clean, and you get rid of fractions. You get rid of them.